The derivative of a function is the slope of the tangent line at any point on the graph of that function. Let's say that we wanted to find the derivative of this function. And let's say we wanted to find it at this point right here. A tangent line touches the curve at one point only. So our tangent line would look something like this. And then we can determine the slope, which would represent the derivative of this function at that point. The problem is we're kind of guessing where the tangent line would be. So how do we do this more precisely? To find slope, we need two points. We've got the first point, which is x, f of x. Then we select another point on the curve further down. So let's say we want to pick it here. And that this distance here is going to be from here to here by some value h. Now we could use any variable we like, but we're going to say we're going to add a little bit to x, this h distance, to get the second point. And therefore, this point would become x plus h, f of x plus h. To clarify, this value here would represent x. Of that point, this value here would be x plus that extra little distance h. On the f of x axis, this would be f of x. And this value over here would be f of x plus h. So what would the slope of the line connecting those two points be? Well, let's draw it. And in this case, it's a secant line because it touches the curve at two points. And we know that slope is equal to the change in f of x divided by the change in x. The change in f of x would mean take this value and subtract it from that value. The change in x would be take this value and subtract it from that value. So what we end up with is f of x plus h minus f of x divided by x plus h minus x, which we can simplify to be f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h, because we can cancel out that x and that x. This represents the slope of the secant line, but we want the slope of the tangent line. So what do we do next? First, let's clean up our workspace a little bit. And let's put back the secant line between those first two points that we selected. And we know that the slope of that secant line is f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. To get a better approximation of the tangent line, let's move that second point closer to the first point, say right there. And we can draw a secant line through these two points, like so, which is getting closer to what our tangent line would look like. And if we selected a point even closer to our original point, and drew a secant line through those two points, we would get even closer to what the tangent line would look like. So what we're seeing is, as that second point gets closer and closer and closer to the first point, we get a better approximation of what the tangent line will look like, and a better approximation of its slope. So the slope of the tangent is the limit of the value of the slope of the secant as the distance between the points approaches zero. We write this as follows. So we'll say here that the slope of the tangent is equal to the limit as that distance h approaches zero of the slope of the secants. And we use the notation f prime of x to represent this slope. 
and this becomes our definition of a derivative. Now that we have the definition of a derivative, let's apply it to an example. Let's say we wanted to find the derivative of this function, which is given by the equation f of x equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. So f at x plus h would be given by 2 times x plus h squared plus 3 times x plus h minus 2. We simply substitute x plus h wherever we see an x. And the derivative would be given by the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Okay, let's get a fresh workspace and work through the solution. We have f of x, f of x plus h, and the formula for calculating the derivative. So let's plug our values in. f of x plus h would go in here, and f of x would go in there. And when we do that, we get a limit as h approaches 0 of, and I'm going to put this in square brackets inside there, 2x plus h squared plus 3x plus h minus 2 minus 2x squared plus 3x minus 2, all divided by h. The reason we add the extra brackets is to keep the parts together and make sure we don't make a mistake with signs, which is a common mistake. And this becomes the limit as h approaches 0 of 2x plus h times x plus h plus 3x plus h minus 2 minus 2x squared plus 3x minus 2 all over h. That's just writing out the exponent, the bases twice. Now let's apply some algebraic techniques to simplify. So we can use FOIL, which is first, outside, inside, and last, and then we can distribute across the brackets and see what happens. So we would get the limit as h approaches 0 of 2x squared plus xh plus xh plus h squared plus 3x plus 3h minus 2 minus 2x squared minus 3x plus 2, all divided by h. An important part is right here. When we distribute the negative sign across the brackets, the signs change. This is a common place where mistakes are made. Okay, let's finish off our solution, get a little bit more space here. Next, let's collect some like terms. Inside the brackets, we have xh and xh, written in common. And I can see that I can plus 3x and minus 3x cancel out. And I can see that minus 2 and plus 2 cancel out. And we would get the limit as h approaches 0 of 2x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 3h minus 2x squared, all divided by h. We can distribute again, in this case the 2 across the brackets, and we would end up with the limit as h approaches 0 of 2x squared plus 4xh 
plus 2h squared plus 3h minus 2x squared, all divided by h. I can cancel out the 2x squared and the minus 2x squared, and that would then leave me with the limit as h approaches 0 of 4xh plus 2h squared plus 3h, all divided by h. To calculate the derivative, I would then substitute 0 in for h, but I can't do that yet because it would leave me with an undefined denominator. So we need a trick to get rid of the h in the denominator, and we can do that by factoring the numerator. And let's see what would happen if we did that. We would get the limit as h approaches 0 of h 4x plus 2h plus 3 all divided by h. In this case I factored out the h in the numerator. Now you can see that I can cancel the h's. They would just divide out. And that would leave us with the limit as h approaches 0 of 4x plus 2h plus 3. Now I can substitute 0 in for h, and that would leave me with 4x plus 3, which is the derivative that we're looking for. So, the derivative of the function f of x equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 2 using first principles is 4x plus 3.